use all engineering, what they call engineering materials in, in the RC-10, uh, which means materials that are the highest strength to weight ratio that, uh, that's available, uh, the kind of things they use in aircraft and so on. So the, the chassis is made out of, of aircraft aluminum. It's, uh... Forty years ago, Roger Curtis put pencil to paper to design the original RC-10. Now, high-end computers and sophisticated software help a team of engineers design the high-performance RC cars we see today. Yeah, so the importance of prototyping, uh, it's been pretty awesome in the day age of you know, 3D printing. We can try a lot of new ideas super quickly, uh, just due to the fast turnaround times, we can design something print it overnight, have it ready by the next day, and then go to the track that night and do testing. Prototyping has helped the development process of this car greatly, from inception through to nearly nearing production. So we started out with an original design that we were able to rapid prototype in-house with our 3D printer. But I think as far as prototyping, um, now we have access to CNC equipment, we have access to uh, 3D printers, you can print um, plastic, steel, aluminum, you can print all kinds of stuff, but we mostly machine all the metal parts, but um, things go quicker now. So back when we made the RC-10, it took a long time to machine every single part by hand, no CNC. Um, newer cars got done quicker by using CNC. And now things can go really quick because we can design the part, we can 3D print something, I can machine something within a couple days, and within a week we can have something else to go test. This allowed us to do a lot of uh, more extreme design choices and test out new things that may normally not be doable uh, with the timelines that we have, right? So having that quick turnaround time and be able to do part after part and go test it and understand quickly if this is the right direction or not, uh, really helped us try a lot of interesting things and move into the direction that we're at now, and we're um, happy with that. So. Yeah, we were able to try multiple iterations of like a suspension arm. We could print two or three different suspension arms in one print, go to the track for one night and determine what, that, what the different arms are doing. This car here, we probably had more testing uh, all over the United States than any other car that we've ever made. That needed. We need more development time. Now that we've we've learned a lot about using prototype parts, so 3D printed parts for our cars. So now moving forward, you know, I was a big part of this learning experience, I guess, for the car it was just printing parts, figuring out how to make them strong and figuring out the flex. It takes a lot more time for uh, let's say Curtis to machine something when I get it all in his program that he takes to the Haas and then mills it out and then all the setup and time and jigging that he has to do to get that part made is is huge right he has a lot of things going on and that's his time versus a 3d printer we can take apart uh, throw it in there and most of the parts that we can print are going to be functional enough to understand if it's going to be good or not also limitation on if you machine something you may not be able to mold it you got molding parameters you know how the mold opens and shuts and and so you gotta you think of those kind of things too 3d printing has been a big part of the design process of this car uh, we've been able to test uh, what three four different total designs now between start to finish um, it's been really nice to be able to take concepts that are completely you know, a stranger to us and be able to understand like, oh, this does work in off-road or it doesn't work in off-road. And uh, we learned a lot in that uh, 
initial two designs that were pretty outlandish and then took what was really good from those and applied it to the next versions and that's closer to what turned into the B7 platform. With all the technology, new materials and prototyping equipment, it still takes thousands of hours of research and development. So what exactly does it take to win race after race? Mm -hmm.